How's up, y'all? What's poppin'? It's D. About to react to this video by Michael Reeves. This is I Built a Surgery Robot. Okay, uh, don't know what's going on, don't know what this is about, but shout out to my patron for requesting this vid. Um, so yeah, we're gonna see um, why he built a surgery robot and uh, what's the purpose. Uh, let's watch. Da Vinci surgical system is the most advanced a streamlined surgical experience for minimally invasive surgery available surgery in the world on a today. On a I can build that. Hey, how's everyone's global health crisis going? My house is on full goddamn quarantine, and I'll probably be dead in a week anyway. Not from the virus, like like an electrocution accident or something. It's actually giving me a lot of free time, and what better way to spend free time right now than to help the medical industry? Now, I can't do any chemistry or biology or, like, body stuff, yuck, but I can do robotics, and let me tell you, those Da Vinci surgery robotics rat bastards are ripping hospitals off. Look at this, $2 million for one shitty robot. They can spend that on a couple hundred bandages or, like, one ambulance ride in the U.S. We can build a better surgery robot right. for a lot less. Come on. The biggest flaw in Da Vinci's design is that it relies on these clunky, slow robotic arms for movement. Say you're operating on a patient's foot. He starts screaming out in pain. You gotta get up to his face, smack him around a little bit, make him shut up. Good fucking luck with these robotic arms. They're slow as shit and they don't have any travel distance. Instead, we're gonna mount the surgical tools to a rail system that can move anywhere on the operating table. Hey, look, it's past Michael. You know it took him five whole days to 3D model and build one rail carriage? What a dipshit. Hey man, shut the fuck up. This shit's hard. Maybe you little bitch. I'm the narrator. I'm like, God, you can't kill me. I'm Here's what the final carriage looks like. You see, it uses wheel bearings to travel up and down the slots in this aluminum rod. But well, Michael, you're just gonna use your hand to make it move? No, you're stupid, and I hate you. For power, we're using a brushless DC motor and an O-drive to turn this into kind of like a brushless servo motor. Do I know what that means? Absolutely fucking not. I've never done this before. What I do know is someone told my voice crack. <laughs> what I do know is someone told me this would be fast and very accurate, and all you have to do to put it in is... I forgot to record all the sound effects, okay? Give me a fucking break. Lit. I got the motor very professionally hooked up to the driver board, which is hooked up to my computer, so we can see what this thing can do. Is he Okay, so this is the like, calibration sequence. It needs to do this before it actually runs. Oh, that's so fucking sick! Oh, I think it, it should be a little faster, though. Uh, oh, okay, the motor has wild. default parameters, Who so you just turn this off. Who just knows how to like That's good, that's, that's fast. Give me one second. Okay, you just stand, stand right there. Whoa, it's pretty cool. And we just gotta put a few of these together and it looks like this. I did the quirky little snap teleportation thing, right? That was three weeks ago, I'm fucking tired. But I built this test platform out of aluminum and wood that I stole from my girlfriend's bed frame. It's not like I can go to Home Depot on quarantine. This is a prototype, so I can write and test the software before I build the actual thing, but even the prototype is pretty cool. It's the same idea with the motor carriage on the x-axis, but now I have two additional motors on the y-axis. And on their own, they're just motors. They don't know how to talk to each other, they don't know how to cooperate. But if you write some software that can talk to all the motors, you can make it do pretty much anything you want. This is the homing sequence. It figures out the balance of the machine by measuring the amperage of the, of the motor on the motors when they stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can make it. You can make it do this shit. It's maybe not as stable as you want it to be, but yeah, it's just a prototype. <laughs> so stupid. So I'm controlling it with my mouse right now. It looks jerky and awful, but it's actually got a really good amount of precision to it. It's kind of going in a circle from the yeah. top-down view. Like I said, this is not the final surgery robot. It's going to be much more refined, much more medical-looking. You know, much more safe for the user. And all that movement was controlled by the code I wrote. Don't worry, I'm not going to show it. I know everyone thinks it's boring. So we can't. I don't give a shit what you think. Look at this dynamic uh, bounce detection routine. That's fucking sick. Here's a limit switch. You can put it here to hit the bounds of your machine. Yeah, fuck that limit switch. It's crazy. Instead, write some code that steps the motor forward until it starts using a lot of power. Then you know you hit the edge of the rail. Then you know exactly where you are in relation to the bounce of the machine. It's fucking sick. Look how cool the code part is, guys. I'm gonna keep going. This part applies to scaling techie. factors that are calculated as a function of the input. But Michael, I hear you ask. So you can move the carriage over any part of the operating table you want. Great. But how are you going to move the medical tools up and down to engage with the patient? Well, that's where the carriage utility mechanism comes into play. That's the thing that's going to move the scalpel or the clamp or whatever up and down, which is great. There's just a small problem, slight problem. Well, I built it. I built it, which is a good thing. My original plan was, you know, just I to have a thin piece of plastic with a motor attached to it that moves a plate. Easy. But then I fucked it. I saw that thing. <laughs> 
okay, there's no way that's gonna survive, so I gotta make it a little strong. You know, I may as well make a goal of faster. I got a little carried away, and now it looks like a time bomb, and it weighs 10 fucking pounds. It works great. The motor precisely moves the mounting plate up and down wherever you want it to go. The thing is, I just don't know if those motors can handle 10 pounds, so we're gonna have to do a little test. Michael, why don't you just use the carriage utility mechanism to test it out? Well, it took me a long time to build, and it's fucking beautiful, so cry more. It looks like it's handling small movements pretty well. Why? Action. Okay, that's not that bad. Okay, oh, it's fine. It'll be fine. We can probably just go ahead and make the final version. And it looks like this. I did the stupid hand thing again. It's been three more weeks. I have severe depression. But Michael, where's the surgery robot? Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, big reveal. This is the surgery robot. Massive payoff. Huge. I have brain damage. Behold the superior surgery robot, you Da Vinci shitter tins. It's got the cum. It's got the cable management. It's got the super fucking hard to reach driver boards. I don't know why I put them under here. I thought it would look cool. But Michael, does it even work? Does it work? <laughs> does it work? I don't know if it works. I haven't turned it on yet. I've been too afraid since it took me so long to build. So I turned the camera on so you can at least see my tears when it tears itself apart. I'm worried about this shit because when I built it, I went, ooga booga caveman brain, metal strong. Metal not strong. Metal more like mm, really McDonald's play place trampoline, but you gotta take chances when you're innovating on the next great thing. So I'm gonna turn it on. Oh God, oh please. Yeah, okay. Please don't break it. Yeah! All right, the machine's working. Now we can start to control it. But Michael, where's the controller? Fuck you. You are the controller. I got this VR hand tracking camera off of Amazon oh. that works super goddamn well. So you just take the hand coordinates from this, pipe them in the surgery robot, and bing, bang, boom. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is wild. Oh, oh, he really out here building shit like this. With just floating your hand around. Robot, go here. Oh, robot, do surgery here. Oh, no, patient bleeding there. Oh, do surgery there on that part. How about you do surgery over here? Now do surgery over there. And now do surgery. Fuck you, Da Vinci. You shitty robot can't do that. You need to squeeze those little metal robot teeth to be yours. Oh, shit. Before I sell my design to surgeons across the nation, we have to attach some surgical tools to the cum because otherwise it's just a big ass robot. So let's buy a scalpel on Amazon. Wow, that is just unacceptable. Scalpels are gonna take a whole three days. Wow, that's pretty reasonable. Fuck no, that's messed up. Dang global health crisis. That's far too long. If only I had an alternative. If you really think about it, scalpels are just shitty, smaller knives. So why don't we just use bigger, better knives? Like, uh, hello, we already have those. Wake up, sheeple. Are you tired of outdated surgical technology? Are you looking for the cutting edge in power, precision, and usability? Look no further. The future of surgical robotics is here. <laughs> Look at the uh -uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> Unlike some other surgical systems, we've run a gamut of tests to ensure our machine has power. No. I'm gonna have a pineapple with oh, fuck. Mincing the operation. Oh, this is scary. <laughs> Operate on it. Surgery over here now. Um, patient, small incision, uh, small incision. Well, I'm okay. dead at his we uniform. Surgery on the patient. <laughs> the power isn't the only thing we strive for. Precision is an essential tenet of surgery, and we make no exceptions when testing for accuracy. What the fuck is that? Hey, we're good to some painting. Yo, Lily, come on, please. She like nine. Ah! Oh, shit. Draw <laughs> the Mona Lisa. Draw the Mona Lisa. <laughs> ah! Okay, oh, the This is I so scary. I'm not gonna pressure you, but this is supposed to show how accurate my machine is. <laughs> It'll use the water. <laughs> Let's see a Da Vinci try to do that. You might be wondering, is the system FDA approved? <laughs> but don't just take our word for it. Here's what a real medical professional has to say about this innovative new technology. We're gonna go for like a laparoscopic appendectomy. So if we just make a small incision above the chest here, uh, we can, a okay. uh, little bit more difficult for some procedures, but not, you can see you still have a lot more accurate control than a lot of surgical <laughs> systems. Oh, so like I was saying, moving the patient is a lot easier with the system. Like normally you'd have to manually move them. Who be, uh, would you add this to your hospital? Do you think hospitals could adopt? Uh, seems a little dangerous. Okay, I appreciate the feedback. You're wrong. Last but not least, we've made our machines so intuitive that, that anyone can do surgery with no before. prior training. So you've never seen this machine before in your life. 
is perfect because this study is to see if we can bring someone from zero skill level all the way up to the Definitely. ability of a surgeon. Boot up right in front of, not too close, because it's kind of dangerous. So just put your hand out. Keep helping me. If you just put your hand out above the thing, higher up controls the knife position. You can move it further closer and it'll get further this away really from dumb. you. We're gonna make a small incision right above the ear. Why is she doing this so hard? Okay, so you're doing it wrong. Why is he put blood in there? Well, fuck. Oh, you're clearly getting another incision to stop. Plug the hole with the knife. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Knife. Yeah, you're perfect. Oh, this, what's, it's okay. No, it's fine. It's, it's learning. It's a learning experience. Try and retract the knife from the head. Let's, let's just try and get it out of it. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. Okay, good incision. Ah, oh shit! Over here, and you don't want him to be able to. Move him over here. Do some surgery over here. Move him back. I don't even know what surgery this was supposed to be. Thank you for watching. That concludes research and development for my surgical system. If you're a hospital looking to try it out, follow me on Twitter, subscribe to me on YouTube, and maybe, just maybe, I'll let you borrow it for a bit. Remember, stay in school, smoke crack, fuck you Da Vinci Robots, bye. That is wild that he actually built this, like even though it turned out a bloody mess. Um, this is really cool, and then he had like the motion like sensor in there, like this is dope. He must be an engineer or something, like... What, I don't know what he does exactly, but looking on the side, I see that he has made other um, robots, taser tag. So he does shit like this all the time. Screen power microwave. He just be building shit. That's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. I wish I could build something, even though it would be a hot ass mess. But yeah, interesting. Really interesting. Y'all let me know what y'all thought though. Let me know what other videos you want to react to, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!